Hello everyone, back to tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's second video. Day 10 is going to take us to the 20th of March. And we'll be able to extend out beyond that with its GFS and ECM ensembles because they run to around a couple of weeks. So we're going to have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. And that gets us into the early part of April. I'll get on with that for you in a moment. Just say that first video saves our 6 a.m. upload. And uh, we also released last night at 7 p.m. a verification for winter broadcast. Uh, quite an interesting video and uh, so we saw how winter forecast performed um, not very well is the answer to that and uh, as well as that though I did announce that we are going to be bringing back the long range when we get into the summer so not going to be any long range updates this spring no summer updates or summer forecast but when we get into June hoping to bring back long range starting off with the NEA forecast winter 2022-2023 and, uh, and then you know um, doing autumn updates Updates, hopefully, fingers crossed, anyway, and then winter updates uh, following uh, on from that in September. So the idea is definitely the intention, definitely to bring back uh, the long range. So if you've been wondering whether the long range will ever return to Gaza, obviously the answer is yes, it will, not yet, but later in the year, we should get the long range back in business. I hope everybody, or most people, are pleased with that, uh, with that announcement. I'm sure some people were hoping that uh, won't be doing any more long range forecasts. You know, not everybody likes what what we do at Gaz. It's not everyone likes Gav. Um, but uh, but I think most people are quite pleased with that uh, with that announcement. I hope so, anyway. Uh, right, anyway, so uh, that's where we're going to take that. Have a look at the verification of all guys if you'd like to do that. And uh, we shall crack on, shall we, with today's 10 to 14 days. So we're going to start off with uh, temperatures at 10 HPA. Uh, so begin to cool down a little bit over the North Pole and over the Arctic as well. Because you're beginning to push back and infiltrate back. And, and so we did have, we have had a warming of the stratosphere, of course, um, uh, around a week ago. We had quite a significant warming of the stratosphere. 10 HPA. It's leveled off now. Cooler temperatures begin to push back. And uh, let's see what the latest GFS forecast is showing. So in the next 24 hours, actually, we're going to get another warming occurring over uh, 10 HPA over Greenland, interestingly. But that one sort of fizzles out very, very quick. It's kind of connected to the warming that's just uh, gone. So uh, in the next sort of uh, four, five, six days, these blue curves will start to push back in from uh, the North Pole. But as we go into the more extended range, uh, heading up toward day 10, we find these deepening sort of yellow to orange colours beginning to come back from Siberia, actually reaching like the temperature level of a sudden stratospheric warming with those red colours around day 10. They're infiltrating in from Siberia into uh, the Arctic and into the North Pole as well. So becoming significantly warmer again, another significant warming of the stratosphere taking place in around a week to 10 days time and that one could well be the killing blow I think for the polar vortex that might be the killing blow for this year's polar vortex this second one that the GFS is predicting quite frequently uh this is how zona winds are currently looking and uh, the forecast zona winds from gfs at weather is cool.com so we did get quite a significant warming of zona winds from a record breakingly strong level to a, a much weaker level uh a few a few days ago we've lifted the zona wind back up and he's trying to strengthen the polar water he's trying to come back as it as it does but as we get the second warming occurring around 10 to 14 days time that's the one that might actually start sending zona winds into reverse here's zero line just here there are several members of the GFS ensembles in around 10 days or so's time that are sending zonal wings into uh, reverse. Certainly another very significant weakening of zonal wings looks like it's on the way. Um, but we might even see like like a reversal of zonal wings, I think, by the end of uh, March. So significant developments. Strategy wise that will signal the end for this year's polar vortex. But of course we've got to wait and see uh, if it happens, what impacts it has on the tropospheric level, whether we'll get uh, any sort of blocking type signals uh, emerging over the high latitudes, probably in April. CT is currently looking like this. Centering temperature is currently standing at 5.9, which is one degree above average. That is provisional to uh, yesterday, to the 9th of uh, March. So just a little bit above average for the time of the year. That's going to rise a little bit more, though, over the next few days, because we are in some quite mild weather. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles in the next couple of weeks. London today, so the red line 
is the 30-year upper air temperature average for London. We're starting off a little bit above average at the moment. Just slightly below average as we get into the uh, weekend. But next week looks very, very mild indeed. We're really going to lift those uh, upper air temperatures up uh, next week. And like, that's kind of looking quite warm. We might see the temperature going into mid, maybe even high teens Celsius uh, for a while uh, next week. After that, there is a drop in the upper air temperature that are taking place. A lot of scatter um, within that. But uh, there are some on some areas that are becoming quite cold. We might pull in some easterly winds. If we do, we've got to wait and see whether they're particularly cold. Precipitation wise, going to be regular sort of rainfall spikes over the next uh, week or two. So, starting off reasonably dry um, to wet weather coming up later this week into the weekend. Then perhaps a drier interlude early next week. And then the rain comes back as we move towards the final. Final week of March. Temperature anomaly is showing the temp to be 18th of March. going to be a bit above average of the UK and much of northern West Europe. The cold temperature is already east of the southeast of Europe. Precipitation anomaly is showing the temp to be 18th of March. Drier than normal. So, a relatively dry and mild week to come. Blaze wind from that from EarthNoscule.net shows that we're putting up southerly winds today. So, uh, taste of spring out there. It's not being out yet. Uh, quite a nice day today, particularly um, you know, in southern and eastern areas where it is really quite mild indeed. With temperature into the teens Celsius. Years. Right, shall we start going through some chart data then? Let's do that then. So we're going to start off with the UK Met uh, Euro for midnight on Sunday with a deep area of low pressure just to our west wing gale force winds into western and southwestern areas overnight Saturday and Sunday. And there will be some quite wet weather in with that as well. Early next week, we'll find that low pressure begin to slip southwards and become cut off over Spain and Portugal. We'll probably bring lots of rain to them as high pressure begins to build over to the east of the country. Things will start to turn drier and potentially quite mild, even if maybe even quite warm for the early part of next week. Uh, by the end of the UK Met uh, run, we find that uh, a trough of low pressure digging in from the north and be beginning to bring in something a little bit cooler from the northwest, albeit the Azores High is about to reach back up from the southwest once again. Icon looks like that, again quite stormy overnight Saturday and into Sunday potentially for western areas. And then uh, high pressure builds over and to the east of the uh, country, across eastern Europe, low pressure out to the northwest, bringing up this gentle, sort of southerly tight wind. Uh, the Azores High begin to reach establish a slightly cooler air mass through the second half next week. This is midday on Thursday. It's also high beginning to ridge back up from the southwest. So it's quite a nice week next week, actually, I think. Uh, GFS midnight run, again, with that low pressure to our west southwest, bringing gale force winds up the western side of the country over the weekend. And the low pressure slips away to the south, high pressure builds over to the east of the country the second half of next week. And then we start to set up this Scandinavian high and pull the wind into the east, which is something GFS is doing quite a lot late, but most of the other model output doesn't seem to want to go with this idea. Uh, that only lasts a few days anyway, and then high pressure ridging back up from the southwest, spring reasonably dry and spring sort of weather. Uh, we finish up though, looking like that, rather wet, windy, and potentially turning a bit colder as well. It's 26th of March, we need to pull in something colder from the north to northwest as this area of low pressure starts to transfer from Greenland and Iceland towards Scandinavia. That might, don't just heights rising a little bit towards Greenland and the Arctic. That might be, um, you know, an impact from the southern stratospheric, or well, from the stratospheric warming. Uh, warmings, given that it's been uh, ongoing for, for a week or two um, now, and, and it's set to resume in around uh, a week to ten days' time. So that might be a result of that, but of course it's a very long way off, it's over two weeks away, and therefore is unreliable. This is how the GFS 6Z is looking. Again, deep low pressure out to West, bringing some big ales up western side, potentially, on uh, Saturday night into Sunday. Um, then early next week, high pressure sort of ridges in from the east, we pull the wind up, from a southerly southeast direction, that will bring a lot of mild weather with it as well. And then the high pressure that takes over across the uh, country and to our east, we bring in these east to southeasterly winds. That'll be quite mild. I think next week could be a proper sort of spring like type week until we get to around day 10 and then low pressure coming back in off the Atlantic, bringing further wet weather with it. High pressure then sort of taking over a little bit further north, pulling in wind into rather colder east northeasterly once you get beyond. Uh, day 10. That's how we look right at the very end of the GFS 6 there, with again high pressure blocking around Scandinavia. Low pressure is out to our west and south uh, west and, um, and yeah, just hints again maybe of some northern blocking type uh, patterns beginning to set up there uh, right at the very end of the GFS. Really. It could be the start of an impact from the stratospheric warnings but of course it's a really long way off. 
GM again looking rather wet windy overnight Saturday into Sunday and then high pressure takes over to our east over next week pulls up these very mild if not quite warm southerly winds and then high pressure builds strongly over the country around days 8, 9 and 10. Again always keeping wind up from the south south east so, so looking very spring like and quite mild even maybe relatively warm. And then the ECM again looks rather stormy uh, over the weekend especially for western areas early next week we draw up those really mild southerly winds if not quite warm southerly winds I and mean, then high pressure builds strongly around eight nine, days eight nine and ten bring loads of dry fine spring weather to most parts of the country i reckon that could lift temperatures into mid to upper teens celsius that that sort of pressure pattern uh by the time we get through to the 20th of march proper proper taste of spring uh, precipitation type forecast based on that HM run from Tretro.com shows rain moving in from the south and west over the uh, second half of the week. That's the potentially quite stormy weather for western areas at the end of the week and into the weekend. Showery early next week and then the trend is towards drier weather perhaps as we get towards days 8, 9 and 10 and high pressure begins to take over. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10, which gets us to the 20th of March. 38 members of the ECM ensembles, including the control and the operational run, have high pressure over and slightly to the east of the country, and we'll be bringing up wind from like a slightly southeasterly direction. Lots of dry weather with that. And then uh, 13 just here again with high pressure over and just to the east of the country, mainly dry and, uh, you know, very spring-like with uh, that option too. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. We'll get to the 25th of March, 20 members of the ECR ensembles, and take the high pressure even further north and set it between Greenland and Scandinavia. Low pressure just down to our south southwest. That could be bringing something a little bit cooler or colder from the east, although the low pressure from the south could bring some wet weather into southern areas. 17 has high pressure right out of the country, mainly dry, and you'd have thought quite spring like with that. And then 14 are so taking the high pressure away to the west of the northwest. Low pressure digs in over Scandinavia. Winds go into a northwesterly type direction. Starts to turn a little bit uh, cooler, perhaps, from the north or from the northwest. CFS V2, uh, finally, looking like this. It's a 500 millibar high tolerance breaking down to wheat pier. The first wheat pier takes from 10th, 16th of March. The coming week has high pressure to the east, low pressure is to the west, and uh, we bring up those southerly southeasterly winds. Will be most uncertain in western areas and will be mild. Week two will be the 17th to 23rd of March with high pressure set up over Scandinavia. Winds go round into an easterly or southeasterly direction that brings some cooler or colder air in from the east potentially. Not for long, though. This is week 3, 24th of March to the 30th. The high pressure begins to recede back eastwards again. Low pressure out to the northwest. And uh, we begin to turn rather more unsettled from the Atlantic again. And then week 4 is going to be the 31st of March to the 6th of April with low pressure around Greenland and Iceland. High pressure is through the Azores and winds are in from a westerly direction. So it turns most unsettled in the north. Dries to the south. No... <laughs> <coughs> excuse me, no sign of any northern blocking up to that point, so even into early April, there's no sign of any response to these stratospheric developments. The wind stays from west, and we stay Atlantic driven. Right, we're done. Uh, so if you enjoyed the video, then please give smash the like button, make sure you subscribe to our channel, don't forget to tell your friends and family about Gals well, get them to subscribe as well. Thank you so much everybody for doing that, and drop a comment, let's know what you think about this and all of our videos thank you so much everyone and uh, we're done uh for today so just so there's no um no videos coming up tomorrow i'm having a day off tomorrow i've got another appointment tomorrow um i'm having a scan actually uh tomorrow so um yeah but no videos tomorrow videos uh taking a day off uh videos will be back on saturday with 6 a.m upload and a 10 to 14 day as well um so uh so yeah we're back in business on saturday but tomorrow uh, i'll have my day off Right, you enjoy the rest of your Thursday, and for this video, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.